Tonight from Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, the fifth-ranked Wildcats welcome the South Carolina Gamecocks for SEC Network Basketball. Kentucky's red hot. They've won eight in a row. They look to keep it going. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart alongside Andy Kennedy. We're going to have some fun tonight. If you're a guy that likes defense, this is the team to watch because Kentucky isn't just good. They're elite. Incredible. Eight straight wins, seven in a row in SEC play since losing in Tuscaloosa in their opener, and they're doing it defensively, holding opponents to under 61 points per game, holding them to one shot off their defensive glass, turning people over. It's really started with Ashton Hagen's at the point of this man-to-man. -man. They don't have great shot blockers in the back, so they've got to do a great job collectively, and they have been off the charts to this point, Tom. It'll be interesting to see how they defend Chris Silva, who had a monster game in South Carolina his win last year at 27 points then a career high he had 22 in the first half against number one Tennessee a week ago he's got to go 20 and 10 tonight for South Carolina to have a chance and he has done that consistently for this team for the six and two start surprisingly you look yep. a little surprised when I even said that well you six a lot and of two the, a lot of the things you say surprise me <laughs> I think that's good yeah hold on tight full house tonight at Rupp where Kentucky's trying to stay undefeated some new faces if you haven't seen South Carolina this year, including A.J. Lawson, their point guard, who's a true freshman from Canada, gets it back from another freshman, Keyshawn Bryant, and Lawson rattles one home. That's a good sign. This young man's coming off his best game on the road. He's actually played better on the road, which is very unusual for a true freshman. He was incredible in Athens on Saturday for the Gamecocks as they beat Georgia. Good sign early for him to knock down an open shot. Same story for Tyler Hero, who's been sensational on the road for Kentucky. He has started every game this season, coming off of a big one at Florida. Reed Travis with the spin against Mike Kotsar. Travis found his own rebound. A physical player inside, but can't get it above the rim. It'll be South Carolina basketball. It's going to be a ice bath kind of night for the post players. It'll be some well, bruises. Well, big key to the game, Tom, is South Carolina's got to do a good job off their defensive glass. Typical South Carolina team is very good off their defensive glass. This one's built a little differently. They cannot allow Kentucky to have second and third chance opportunities. The bigs, Coatsar and Silva, both had big games in South Carolina's comeback win last year in Columbia. And South Carolina can't do that. You yeah. can't throw the ball out of bounds just trying to initiate offense. Possessions are going to be way too valuable in this game. South Carolina runs with a little bit more tempo than you might remember. Here's Keldon Johnson. I'd love to get him going. That kid's incredible. Cal's had a lot of great freshmen in this program during his tenure. And that kid at the end of the day is going to be right up there with many of the best. Back. Sensational talent. To back turnovers. Here's P.J. Washington. And Travis will bring it out. Hero. You've seen South Kentucky's missed two shots and got offensive rebounds both times. South Carolina's got to do a good job of cleaning up their glass. Silva couldn't convert on the run out. And that one will go against Kotsar. Yeah, you see, you know, if, if you came into the game as a casual fan, you'd say, you know, South Carolina's going to bump and grind, not give you anything easy, play in the half court. And Kentucky would be the one looking to get up and down. But both of these squads are built differently. South Carolina, 35th in adjusted tempo. They count the bucket for Johnson after the goaltending call to this point in the season. And, and it's really a tribute to Frank Martin and his staff. You know, they were struggling in the non-league. He looked at his group and he said, hey, what gives me the best chance to win? And that's playing a lot quicker than typical South Carolina basketball. 21 in strength of schedule byproduct of all the top teams that they faced. One of the best games of the year they played in the non-conference was a game at Michigan. Shut down what was in a red-hot Michigan team offensively, but couldn't pull out the win on the road. And it kind of got Chris Silva going. Remember, he had a double-double monster night, and from that point forward, he's been the Chris Silva that everyone thought in the preseason. Trey Campbell with the triple, and South Carolina has the lead. That's the post-grad from Georgetown that they're counting on perimeter shooting and being solid with the ball. He's made one early. Lawson's made one early. Good sign for the Gamecocks. Sonny Gravitz locking up Tyler Hero near side of the court. Gravitz not known for his defense. Kentucky will have to run good offense. You know, a lot of 
A lot of standing around right now. Now it's about a player making a play. You can't help up. Great drive dish by P.J. Washington. That's what makes him such a difficult matchup. His ability to go by you off the dribble, end of the clock. Coatsar helps up, can never do that on the baseline. Reed Travis with an opportunity to cash in at the line. So both bigs have a personal foul, Silva and Coatsar. John Calipari, 10th season here with Big Blue Nation. It's hard to believe, isn't it, when you yeah. say that? 10 years. What an incredible job he's done. And we were talking to him earlier. He feels really good about where this team is right now. They're getting better, and they're defending at a very, very high level. And Cal knows defense travels. But what's amazing about it is that they are such an improved defensive team. And I asked him today if this is the most improved he's seen a team turn into as Kotsar rock walks with it. And Cal Perry told me that over the last 35 days, they have jumped from 48th in the country in defensive efficiency to where they stand now, which is 8th, according to Ken Palm. They've just all bought in. It starts with this kid with the ball, Ashton Hagens. I remember coming in here in the preseason, watching them work out. I did the, the, the blue-white exhibition game, and they were comparing him favorably to Eric Bledsoe as one of the best on-ball defenders they've ever had as a freshman. So he sets the tone, and then everyone else has done a great job of staying connected. That is a bad sign for South Carolina. Reed Travis is just crushing them off the offensive glass. You've got to hold Big Blue to one shot if you have any chance in this building. Turns into a bucket for Tra uh, Travis, the Stanford transfer. And he's defending Silva here. Reach in. Hands were reached in. You know, that's kind of the that's kind of the, the old NBA white through. Chris Silva been there, done that. Oh, get two from the line. Fifth ranked Kentucky with an early lead on South Carolina. We've got their Hall of Fame head coach, Mike Gupp, tonight. Here's John Calipari wired. Have fun, guys. Hey, go do your thing. Go have fun. Do your thing. Play. Go have fun, kid. Rebound that ball with two hands. Bring it in and go. Have a ball, guys. Hey, way to go. Great read. Come on. How would you describe this version of John Calipari? Well, that segment right there is certainly the kinder, gentler John Calipari. Uh, everybody's in a good mood when you win eight in a row. Yeah. And he's got to be pleased, as you talked about before the break, at the progression of his team defensively. They're very efficient offensively as well. His guys are growing up. When you look out there, there's only one guy that was on that floor this time last year. That's P.J. Washington. The ancient one is a sophomore. <laughs> the rest of those guys are new to this, and uh, he's got to be pleased with the way they're growing as a team, and I think you heard that in that sound. Well, one of the things he discussed when it came from the defensive efficiency is how that affects their confidence on the offensive end of the floor. Specifically, you can't be a confidence ball player if you're getting beat off the dribble or a guy hits a three in your eye or somebody dunks on you. And, That's impossible. And you're, you're guarding so well, you know a couple of mistakes offensively. You're not squeezing the ball because you're doing such a good job defensively. You're not allowing teams any separation which allows you to be patient offensively. Here's a key for South Carolina. Chris Silva just picked up his second. Huge. That's huge, and, and again, it's been a problem that's been problematic for that kid all four years at South Carolina. It's off the ball, it's 18 feet from the basket, kind of wrestling in the mid post. It's inconsequential and not necessary. South Carolina in the 2-3 out of this out-of-bounds play. They'll run zone about 17% of the time. Ran a lot against Tennessee a week ago. Here's P.J. Washington. That's where you want it. Middle of the zone, he's going to drive the five man. Typically in the middle of the two, three is going to be the center. He's typically the most immobile defender. P.J. Washington, we've already seen what he can do off the bounce. Just drives the big man, gets to the free throw line. P.J. Washington went through the draft process this summer. Guys in the next level said he needed to develop his face up game and his ball handling, and if you look at him over the last four, you would say this guy's ready for the league. Well, he's played outstanding. He's put himself in conversation for a conference player of the year with his last four especially averaging close to 21 and 11, and he's, and he's eight 
for 18 from three in league play. So he's making enough, one per game at 44%, to show that he has the ability to stretch and play some 3-4 possibly at the next level. Kentucky picks up full court. Ashton Hagens, perhaps the best defender in the SEC, certainly on the perimeter. Now, if you're South Carolina, you don't have Silva. Oh, so you've got, got to you got to figure out a way to manufacture <laughs> offense. Frank Martin dials up a back cut off an aggressive Ashton Hagens. No help side because the ball's in the middle of the floor. Good design, good execution by South Carolina. Hagens walked with it, and South Carolina has a chance to take the lead after this play a moment ago. Ball's in the center of the floor, eliminates help, help side. Felipe Hase with a great bounce pass. They were anticipating a bit of an overplay by Hagens using his aggression against him. Cashed in for an easy layup. Hagens is so good defensively. He is top 10 in the country in steal percentage. Here's Trey Campbell. Mm, what and a great Campbell sign. makes another. What a great sign for South Carolina. Kids knocked in two threes. He got a layup. He's obviously excited about his first appearance in Rupp Arena and responding. Four points a game while he was at Georgetown. He has turned it up here in the SEC. Best ball movement of the game by Kentucky. A little more sense of urgency on that possession. Ball changed sides of the floor, pounded it to the post. P.J. Washington makes it look routine. Hase gets a touch deep. He tried that same Chris Silva move. Yeah. Wasn't quite as convincing. And Silva's really good at getting to the free throw line, which is another reason it's costly that he's on the South Carolina bench with two early fouls. He's a foul magnet. You know, last year I think he was second in the country in free throw attempts per game. Yeah. So fouls tend to always be around Chris Silva on both ends. He gets some in and stripes their TV time. Great ball movement here, Tom. You see the ball change sides of the floor. Great entry to the post. It looked like they were trying to double. You call that a 4X, big to big doubling of the post. The freshman, Fink, was late. P.J. Washington split it, made it look routine. Frank will set the screen here for Campbell. And now he gets a touch on Travis. South Carolina living on that side of the lane at the block of Frank. Able to convert. Freshman from Roselle Catholic. Same high school as Isaiah Briscoe. It's an impressive move. He's a big-bodied freshman going against a big-bodied post-grad senior in Reed Travis. Bumped him off his spot, made a left-handed hook. Tyler Hero goes baseline and gets all the way to the backboard. He is so much more than just a standstill shooter. Hassani grab it in his space, forcing him to drive, and Tyler Hero gets there in two bounces and finishes easy. This kind of has a feeling of an NBA game early, like just trying to feel each other out a little bit. Nobody's in too big a rush. I think both teams are, are, are locked and loaded. I mean, you've you got to realize South Carolina's had their struggle in the non-league, but they're 6-2 and two in conference play, so this is 6-2 and two versus 7-1. and one. This is a tight game that you anticipate. Keldon Johnson hit a couple of threes in the win against Florida. Couldn't knock that one down. I love that kid's game. I thought that was the right decision. He's, we, we had a great vantage point. He's dead on line a little deep. Uh, he certainly does not struggle with confidence. That guy is a big shot maker. Mm. South Carolina hits another from deep. It's Keyshawn Bryant, who's only made four on the season, including that one. Yeah, when he comes in shooting under 16% from three in SEC play, and you find one to go down and rub, it's like finding a quarter on the street, isn't it? Something like that. Reed Travis got it deep. He drew the foul on Frank. It's his second on South Carolina's big. That might be an issue for the Gamecocks going forward. Boy wonder, Tyler Hero getting to the rim on one side, and on the other side, another freshman, Keyshawn Bryant. AK, we're going streaking. Notable win streaks in college basketball. How about Tennessee? Their longest in school history. They bettered the one that was put forth by the team during World War I. Rui Hachimura and Gonzaga have won 12 in a row. That's pretty good, especially out west. And the Huskies have come out of nowhere. Pac-12 
in the weeds with Washington's undefeated in conference play. And Jay Wright's Villanova team via the long ball. More than half of their shot attempts a game come from behind the arc. They're on a nice little streak, and so is Kentucky. And by the way, it'll be a monster matchup with Tennessee next Saturday, 8 o'clock on ESPN. In this eight-game win streak, Kentucky only allowing 59 points a game and holding opponents to 38% shooting. They held Florida last week to 3 of 14, 3 in the first half. And the Gators only went to the free throw line 10 times. Did you see points in the paint? They are not allowing teams much penetration via the pass or the dribble at the rim. And this is a, not a typical Kentucky team. Their best shot blocker is Nick Richards, who plays about 10 or 11 minutes a game. They're doing it just by staying connected and not allowing a lot of penetration. Nick Richards enters for the first time. That's sophomore Nick Richards. I just called him. I just said he didn't play that much. Here he comes. And there you go. It's expert analysis. Hey, could you say that I never win the lottery, please? <laughs> Jamal Baker is also on the floor for Kentucky. The free throw allowed Kentucky to extend pressure a little bit just again to, to try to continue to agitate the young South Carolina ball handlers, most especially that young man, A.J. Lawson. Block. Did Montgomery you, did came I, out of nowhere. Did I tell you, he could block them, too. They, they've got their two best shot blockers in the game right now. Nick Richards and E.J. Montgomery, lively, bouncy, long guys in the post. And you've alluded to it already, is this is a Kentucky team that's elite defensively, but they usually don't have guys to protect the rim on the floor because Montgomery and Richards don't play a ton of minutes. Exactly, and Cal decided to go with them together, which is a new strategy. Uh, Inline OB here, great play. You know, and we saw them going over this and shoot around. Uh, Tony Barbie, who had the scout, former Auburn coach, talked specifically about that play. Uh, South Carolina, good execution, good cut, foul. Attention to detail in the scout is so very important as we're in the month of February. And fouls on Tyler Hero. And here's Hase. And Baker pulls it down. Another good OB. They were fortunate. Hase had a good look at the basket. South Carolina up a deuce in a building that is full, but AK is quiet. In South Carolina, you know, they only make around six and a half threes a game in SEC play. And they've already made three big ones tonight, three for four to stay in this game early. Cal thought this one was tipped, shouldn't have been an over the back. I agree. And, it, and the rule used to be first touch, but I thought they did away with that rule. Is he saying he did not touch that ball? Yeah, he's wow. saying that it was uh, under Kentucky's possession the whole time and that Keldon Johnson simply fumbled the pass. Missed that one, but they miss him. Oh, Ooh. Felipe Hase. Well, Felipe Hase felt bad for him, so he said, here, Kyle, I'll just throw it to you. Uh, to set the set the world right. That's how they do it in Chile. You know he's Chilean. <laughs> he is. The peaceful yeah. people, not, not big agitators. And Osorno, Chile. Silva still on the bench, picked up his second at the 15:43 mark. How long do you leave him there? Well, as long as you're in, in, in this game, stay connected, stay connected. You hope you can buy him to the half. Mm. But if it starts getting away from you, Frank will have to go back to him. But as we talked about, he's such a foul magnet. He's not a guy that's just going to kind of get out there and not be who he is, and right. that's ultra aggressive. So you got to take all that into consideration. That one went off the shot clock. It'll be Kentucky basketball. 14 seconds left on the shot clock. 2-3 zone on this out-of-bounds play. They're going to screen it. That guy is a designated shooter. Must be nice. Jamal Baker. 33% from deep. Didn't shoot the ball well last time. Missed all four against Florida. Tom, he's taken 20 shots in league play, 16 of them behind the arc. He's out there for one reason, and that's another one. Grab it, pulls it down. Kentucky has three back. Great transition defense, and Hase, no. He's going to get that. That was a point of emphasis in South Carolina shoot around. Trail threes will be open because Kentucky does such a good job. If you can get any penetration out of the initial push, they're all going to be to the level of the ball, which means that trail three will be open, as you just saw. Hase did not cash in. They're going back to Baker. Cal, Cal's done this a couple of times. He's running that baseline screening action. Kids had two good looks, knocked down one of them. They're going to try to get him another look. 
You saw off the, off the out-of-bounds play, South Carolina 2-3. They screened the top of it, overloaded to Baker, knocked it down. A foul is on Kravitz, sixth team foul. Kentucky will be in the bonus after the next. Watch Lob here, here it comes. Oh, Johnson never left his feet because Coates are drifted back for him. Again, attention to scouting report. I thought Keyshawn Bryant, who was isolated over here, I think he did a good job of seeing it and stepping in the path of the cutter. If South Carolina does not do a better job off their defensive glass, they're not going to give themselves a chance to win this game. Nice look from Baker to Montgomery. Again, it's like a broken record. It's like a broken record, and I know that destroys Frank Martin. Kentucky is very good off the offensive glass, and they are showing that tonight. Nice touch by Kotsar. And he'll go to the free throw line. This is their sixth offensive rebound, and we're not even to the halfway point of the first half. And it's everybody. It's not just Reed Travis or P.J. Washington. Now you see it's E.J. Montgomery and Nick Richards. But South Carolina, again, to our earlier point of adjusted tempo, get the ball out, push it down the floor. Coach Sar outruns the Kentucky Bigs to get an and one opportunity. Richards committed his second. Campbell back on the floor. He's got some big buckets already. And Reed Travis returns for Kentucky. Mike Coatsar from Estonia. This is the free throw. Have you ever been to Estonia? I have. I had a player from Estonia. Uh, they like potatoes. Really? Yeah, in a lot of different ways. They like them, they like them marinated. <laughs> they, like them, they like them distilled. Uh, they're, big, they're big into potatoes. Calvin Johnson, no. He shot Bryant, got his hand on that, batted it out of bounds. I guess that's better than the alternative to this point. But South Carolina has to keep Kentucky to one shot. You're not gonna, you're not gonna beat them if you give them unlimited shots on the offensive end. Good execution right here. A little bully ball for Travis, and the result is his second personal foul. The one critique I would have of Reed Travis, and he's a terrific player, he plays too upright. See how upright he is? And when you're upright, it's difficult to create separation. Mike Coatsart, the Estonian, did a good job of moving his feet, taking it through his chest. Talk Great individual defensive play. You mentioned potatoes. I thought you were going to say you know, cheese, sour cream, bacon bits. Oh, no, you're talking. That's talk the way, by the way, Reed Travis played at Stanford. Get the ball on the elbow, muscle your way in, and get to the rim. That's right. That's right. Got to play a little lower. Uh, I think if he was a little lower, he probably would have created the angle he was looking for. You know, you're scoring the post with space and angles, and that's he's the epitome of that. He's not going to play over the top of you. He needs space. He needs angles. Lawson got cut off. Coach starts to go a different way. This is Trey Campbell again. Shot clock winding down. Coach are on Montgomery. Good penetrating pitch. Campbell Good penetrating pitch. Three. That, that, that's Mike Coatsar. That's all Mike Coatsar penetrating and pitching. And Baker, who's in for his offense, is not necessarily a defensive stalwart. You do not help off strong side corner. He did. And Trey Campbell continues to make him pay. Baker gets two of them back, makes a jumper, and Coatsar ended up on his back. So how about Mike Coatsar? The Estonian leading the way for South Carolina. He's been terrific. Ran the floor after a made shot. You see him get the and one opportunity. And here at the end of the clock, penetrate, pitch. You can't help off strong side corner. Go off, it's you and him. Why'd you throw it that way? Come on, baby. PJ, stay there. Down, down. That guy does that. You have the ability to go steal anytime you want. When the ball comes out, grab it. Rebound. John Calipari wired and Trey Campbell's wired from deep. Campbell has been mm -mm good early. Two big threes, back cutting, stepping up like a fifth year senior. You know, Frank has been searching for offense from different people. Tonight he's getting it from Trey Campbell. Were you ever tempted when you were wired to 
entertain the truck. I don't know, like just oh, break I, into a rendition I was of Amarillo all, I, by morning. I knew that uh, it wouldn't get to air the things that I was saying, but I knew somebody was hearing them. So I was always a little concerned at times. And after all that, they gave you a headset. After all that. P.J. Washington got whistled for a foul right before break, and now E.J. Montgomery picks one up. I think I think when you're guarding Mike Kochar, they may be a little close to him. He's deceptively quick with his left hand. You know, we were just talking about Reed Travis playing too upright. Mike Kochar will really get down and, and, and create some advantage. Not a great shooter, as you see there from the free throw line. It's his second miss, so they may want to gap him a little more because his penetration has been problematic for Kentucky in the half court deep. Here's Hagens with the lob, almost threw it out of bounds to get Kotsar. What do you mean gap him? Explain that. Well, get off of him. They're a little too tight to him, allowing him space to drive by. I would be at least an arm's length away from him, make him show that he can knock down a perimeter shot so that his penetration would not continue to break down my defense. He just committed his second. Chris Silva still on the bench with two. Mm. Free throw shooting has not been prolific to this point. Again, and with two good shooting teams. Yeah. Lawson got all the way in and finished. You know, that's the score early, score late. And now Frank gets into this 1-2-2. Two, two. After a make, they'll get into this 1-2-2 two, two and then match up out of a zone. It's kind of a 3-2. They'll match out of it. Uh, look for Kentucky to try to get it to the high post right there where P.J. Washington is. So then do you just wait and then run your man offense? Right there. No, they're going to just throw it right to the middle of the zone and then try to play behind it. When they have Reed Travis in the game, they can duck you in. E.J. Montgomery is not that type of post player to this point, so I think it'll be Washington in the middle of the zone. South Carolina off to a 6-2 and two start in the league, a Saturday win against Georgia where they hit 11 of 16 from deep. And they have kept that hot shooting going tonight. Leading on the road at Rupp. And they come out of there with it. This is Bryant. Taken away. A tip from behind by Ashton Hagens. Player making a play, pursuing that ball, Tom. Here's Washington short. We're going to show you a little bit later in the telecast what makes Ashton Hagen such a special defender when it comes to measurements. Kentucky basketball after the turnover tonight at 11 o'clock after Vandy, Arkansas. The SEC Now team will be back with all the hardwood highlights, analysis, and postgame interviews. No one covers the SEC like we do. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. We'll hear from them after the next commercial break, I'm told. Peter Burns in the building where facts are optional. <laughs> Lawson tried to wall up Higgins and foolish. the freshman picked up his foul. Just foolish. We've seen a few bad decisions. I, I don't necessarily disagree with the P.J. Washington shot. I don't really like it in transition off of one pass. If it's later in the clock after you've gotten ball movement. Then Lawson made a very poor decision trying to throw ahead. Uh, and now you foul 45 feet from the basket. So not very heady by either team in that little two minute segment. And so Silva returns. Hagan's left it short. I'm a little surprised by that, Tom. Are you? I am, but the, he traded him out for Kotsar, who has two. I get it, but you know, you're up two, five to play. This guy, I know they're over there in his ear saying, hey, don't foul, don't foul. But this guy's going to do what he does. Turned over. Gravit tried to bully his way through. Silva picks it up and throws it blind. And Nick Richards comes out of there with it. As you get to February, the games get very physical in league play. And we're seeing that. The officials, we've got three good ones here, are allowing the game to be played physically. So. You cannot look for a bailout. You got to put your big boy pants on and go in in that paint and finish plays such as that. Washington hangs in hits. When that guy gets it in the key area, he is as good as there is in the Southeastern Conference. He can get to his spot off one dribble. He can go left. He can go right. And he can play through contact. That's why he's an all-league player. Well, PJ's dad, Paul, underwent some minor surgery today. He was hoping they would finish the surgery in time and be of clear mind to watch the game. So a special shout-out to him. We understand everything went well. 
And if he doesn't remember what happened in the game, then his wife Sherry can explain everything. Or you can always watch it tomorrow again on the app. My hope was that you would be of clear mind tonight. <laughs> Good at luck least, with at, that. At least for half of the game. Well, you caught me early. Nick Richards commits his third. I do like the strategy by Frank Martin in South Carolina. If you're going to have Silva on the floor, get him the ball. He's been on the floor for two trips offensively and touched the ball both times. Frank Martin has done an outstanding job of adjusting to mm. what this team is in league play, and that's why they're sitting here at six and two, but you can't miss free throws. Chris Silva draws seven and a half fouls per 40 minutes played. That's the eighth best rate in the entire country, which means he gets points from the line and he sends your guys to the bench. Great move. Wow, what a left by Hero. Great move. You got to know that Tyler Hero got likes going left to a pull up right there. Continued to dribble through contact. Very impressive finish for that young man. Evan Hinson, the football player on the floor for South Carolina. Gravit just kind of threw it up after he lost his balance. Silva, it's like trying to find your phone when it slides underneath the seat. <laughs> and it'll be Kentucky basketball. I like the effort by Hassani Gravit. I don't know how he didn't squeeze that. It kind of squirted out. You see Frank bought a little time with Silva. Now he'll sit him and come with his, his freshman with with uh, explosive hair. I like to say that's explosive that hair. By the way, my thing I always do is you just tap the brakes and the phone usually comes sliding right back up on the floor mat. You're good. Bro, I'm so terrible. I'm so ADHD. If I drop something like in the little crevice, I'm reaching down there. And it's dangerous. Dangerous. <laughs> Sounds like it for everyone. Tyler Hero used every portion of the rim. He's got six. Timeout South Carolina. Frank Martin is all over Hassani. Grab it for his defense or lack thereof. 7 nothing run. That'll make your coach dance. Sauce shoes, by the way. SEC action tonight. Number one, Tennessee at home on Rocky Top against Missouri. Then I'll be there Saturday when Florida comes to town. Gators are on the plane tonight, as the guys mentioned. And also at 9 o'clock, Vandy, Arkansas on the SEC network. They'll follow us. Pat Bradley mentioned the rebounding. Kentucky with eight offensive rebounds already. And they are 18 to 9 overall on the glass. Cats have put together a 7-0 run. South Carolina shooting 50% from the floor. Check that box. Four for seven from three. Check that box. They're not making free throws. They're not controlling their defensive glass. And they've got seven turnovers. That's why they have dug a quick five-point deficit. Big possession here out of a timeout. Let's see what Frank Martin wants to do with the ball without crowd, without, without, well, wow, that's a hard word, without Chris Silva in the game. Uh, had tipped to Rosebud. Speaking of distilled. <laughs> E.J. Montgomery with the foul. That's his second. They're piling up for the Kentucky post players. Montgomery's got two, Richards three, Travis two, and P.J. Washington one. Alonzo Frank, Jersey City, New Jersey. Two for six from the free throw line. Those are opportunities that you must cash in against the top five team in their own building. South Carolina's doing a good job of putting pressure on the basket in the paint. You know, we showed you a graphic earlier about how good Kentucky's been about not allowing point paints, point points in the paint. South Carolina seems to be getting the ball there, can't cash in. Here's Hagens, pushes to the gap, kicks to Johnson. Ninth offensive rebound, inside out, count that. Hero for three. Anytime they get that off the offensive rebound, you pitch it out and it's just like practice. Inside out, step in, Tyler Hero. Extra pass for Lawson. South Carolina hanging in there, bringing some pressure. He's going to make that one, too. The shot prep wasn't great. Hopped into it at the end. Frank takes it away from Hagen. But the quality of Kentucky's shot has gotten much better in the last five minutes. Hints them with this lead. That's the first miss tonight from Trey Campbell. He started off four for four and three from three from deep. Ashton Hager's dribble penetration is, is starting to become a little problematic. You see Frank going back, South Carolina in this 3-2 matchup zone. Look for P.J. Washington in the high post area or in the short corner where you see him there. Let's take a listen. John Calipari wired. 
Do you understand, again, instead of bumping, you get away from him and run. You don't move up, you move away from him. Just energy, man. Energy, look. Boop, 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 boop. You let him catch it and push them. Not enough aggressiveness, not enough. Come on. You know what he's talking about right there, Tom? He's talking about defensively. Believe it or not, offensively, you want contact. Defensively, you do not. You want to be away from the offensive player and up line, in line, so that you can beat him to spots. Cal is trying to get his guys to get off, get his players to get off the offensive players when they are away from the ball so they can't cut to the basket. Silva returns for South Carolina. Another free throw coming for P.J. Washington. Hassani Gravit back on the floor also. Frank Martin yanked him from the game a couple of minutes ago. P.J. sophomore from Dallas out of Finley Prep. Nate Kentucky's opened up an eight-point lead. Just like that. Missed opportunities for South Carolina. Kentucky much better offensively in the last five minutes. Big possession here early in this game. They got Silva back in. I would be surprised if he didn't touch it. Bryant got out of control and quickly found it. That's not the one you want. Now you've got numbers on the other end. Kentucky with good ball movement. Ashton Hagens has been making good decisions with the ball. Cal will now run something to get the ball specifically where he wants it. Let's see where we want it, right there. Oh, Silva denies up top. Went hard trying to get after it, then used his feet to corral it. We got a jump ball. We'll stay this direction. We heard the thud. He hit his elbow pretty hard. Kid's a tough kid. They were going to try to go ISO to P.J. Washington on that elbow. Chris Silva not allowing the touch. He was a soccer player as a youth growing up in Gabon. The Prince of Gabon. That's what I think he, he I think he's got a shot at princeship. Is that right? Well, what do you got to do to qualify to be a prince? Continue to average a double double at South Carolina, and I think that's a step in the right direction. Or take a taxi to Bel Air. Here's Hagens. PJ Washington for three. Boy, he has really improved that aspect. Just as you said, he had got feedback from NBA executives. They wanted to see his ability to stretch, and it looks good, doesn't it? Yeah. Looks clean. And his leadership has taken another step. Got on his guys in the Florida game a little bit and directing the traffic defensively a moment ago. And Cal has challenged him to be not only one of the best players in this league, which he is, but one of the best players in the country. And the kid has responded in the last month. Bryant splashes one down. Freshman out of Winter Haven, Florida, by way of Huntington Prep. South Carolina desperately needed that basket just to try to stay around, stay around, give yourself a chance, because Kentucky offensively has been very efficient. Ten on the clock. Let's see if South Carolina switches this ball screen. Lawson stays with travel. Hagens. Yeah, kept it on his hip. Another turnover for Ashton Hagens. I think they waited a little late in the clock to get into their action. Maybe a little confused. Again, E.J. Montgomery, a true freshman, playing extended minutes based on the foul trouble of Big Blue. Not a great half for Hagen's got torched a couple times defensively and he's turned it over five times. Here's Bryant on quickly. Mm. Got a two for one opportunity. Let's see if Kentucky will take advantage of it. Timeout. 53.8 in the first half. 24 on the shot clock. We get a chance to. Spend some time with Johnny David. It's not quite 94 feet, but it's pretty darn close. All right, Big Blue Nation, we heard your clamoring, so we're going to do it. Half the distance, twice as good, 47 feet with Johnny David. Favorite restaurant in Lexington? Uh, how to go with local taco. What are you watching on Netflix right now? Kind of between right now, but I just finished How to Go with Murder, and it was, it was pretty good. Who's your celebrity crush? I uh, have to go with Mila, Mila Kunis. What's your favorite golf course you've ever played? Um, don't golf too often, but I probably, probably have to go with Sinclair Country Club back home in Pittsburgh. That sounds pretty exclusive. Uh, and finally, how old were you when you first met John Calipari? Um, I want to say probably 12 years old, I believe. Yeah, back when Orlando was here. 47 feet with Johnny David. Billis, you're on the clock. So 
J. Bill has caught a lot of flack for doing 94 feet with a Kentucky player. So we spent some time with Johnny. And what a great guy. By the way, Kentucky is hosting a few dozen Special Olympians tonight. And Johnny is the part of the student athlete uh, fund that is helping them with their polar bear plunge. And he was excited to have them in the building. His dad played at Pitt while Cal was an assistant coach there. Now Kentucky can hold it for one. We were wondering out of that timeout if they could get a two for one. It looked like they were going to have the opportunity. Missed opportunity for P.J. Washington going left. And then another turnover by South Carolina, which is going to give Kentucky the last shot of the half. Almost a four second difference between the game clock and shot clock. Hagan's turned it over six again. time and then he gets it right back. And he's going to get a layup out of it. How about a duck? E.J. Montgomery slams it home, and that's how the half will end. Kentucky, not a clean half, but an 11-point lead at the break. They close it on a 17-4 run, led by P.J. Washington with eight in that span. Plenty to talk about in the studio. Let's turn it over to Peter Burns alongside my buddy Pat Bradley. Indeed, wasn't the cleanest half for Big Blue Nation, but when you're the fifth ranked team in the country. And you did great, and then he drove and you went up. Just get away, because you're going to block it. He thinks he's getting a layup, and you're pinning it. Pass the ball! Go! Away! Away and run! Let's shoot the ball, kid. Back at Rupp Arena, where fifth-ranked Kentucky leads South Carolina 39-28. At the same moment, Duke is trailing Boston College at Cameron Indoor. Tom Hart alongside Andy Kennedy. Great to have you. What would you think of the first half, and what do you expect to see in the second? I thought South Carolina came out with the right approach, made timely shots, really led by fifth-year senior Trey Campbell. He knocked down three big threes. They back-cut him out of a dead ball situation. Keyshawn Bryant stepped up. They were, they were in a great offensive rhythm, but they were doing a bad job off their glass. Kentucky doubles them up off the glass, including 10 big offensive rebounds that led to that Tyler Hero shot. Then out of a timeout, or, or a dead ball, South Carolina goes 2-3 zone. What are they trying to do out of it? Kentucky's going to screen the top, overload with Keedron Johnson, off penetration, Asani Gravin has to stop the ball, which leads to Baker open for the three. And that's why he's in the game. That kind of looked like a stick figure running away from the sun. You know what? That was my first telestration, and I think you can tell. <laughs> but I, I, nonetheless, I, I, Baker still with a clean look, great execution out of an inline OB by John Calipari and his Kentucky Wildcats. Early in the game for South Carolina, Trey Campbell got some shots. Here's Silva getting loose inside. Reed Travis lost his foot. His first field goal. It'll be interesting to see. The game was kind of mucky at times. Uh, a lot of fouls around the basket, a lot of physical play. Reed Travis with two, Chris Silva with two. Both of those kids are important to their teams moving forward. Got to stay out of foul trouble. P.J. Washington going after it hard. P.J. started the game with one pair of Nike high tops, and then about midway through the first half, decided to ditch him and go to those. Maybe one feeling it, man. Yeah, I mean, as a broadcaster, just I know you're new to it, but sometimes I'll just go change my tie at the half. Yeah, I noticed. I noticed. Get in the flow. Maybe a new pocket square. I noticed you changed your drink. What is it, Red Bull? <laughs> wow, it's late in the night to be drinking Red Bull. We're going to be you, up for a while, partner. You are a veteran. <laughs> You notice uh, P.J. Washington, great first half scoring the ball. Still didn't have a defensive rebound, which is unusual. The kid is very good on the glass, but he's been really good in that key area off the dribble. Getting into the paint. Took a scratch on the temple, looking like former Missouri star Derek Chivas out there. How about that? That's a good call. Derek Chivas, what a great player. They're going back to Silva. Kentucky is digging, meaning the defender on the passer ball side. In that situation, it was Ashton Hagens is digging, not allowing Silva to turn to the baseline side. 
A.J. Lawson continues to play well on the road for a true freshman. He had a really good first half. That was an excellent drive. Denied by Kotsar. He's all over Reed Travis. We're under 10 in the clock. That kid's going to go left to a pull-up. Reed Travis is just waiting for it, and then we get a foul finally, and Silva ends up on the floor. Watch here, Ashton Hagens digs, gets him out of rhythm. We're in a little bit of a scramble. And then A.J. Lawson, just a straight line drive and finish. Reed Travis does not seem as if he's been in the game very long, does he? You know, no. he got the two early fouls. He's played nine man minutes to this point, and that's already his fourth offensive rebound. If Kentucky makes it back to the Final Four, they'll be playing in Reed's hometown of Minneapolis. Played at De La Salle High School, where he was quarterback of the football team, ran a spread option offense. Wow, quarterback. Yeah. Big QB. Big QB right there. He'd be hard to tackle. We talked about gapping. Remember earlier, we talked about gapping. Coach R, P.J. Washington doing a better job forcing the travel. You've got to play him as a driver. Kotar will take a seat. Hase returns. I don't know what Frank Martin just said to him, but the uh, Kentucky fans right behind the South Carolina bench just learned some new words. They got a chuckle out of that. They did. They? Everybody got a chuckle except Mike Kotar, I promise you. <laughs> He's heard it before. High ball screen, duck in, great job. The best in the league at doing that is Tennessee. Their high-low action between Schofield and Williams, sometimes Williams and Kyle Alexander is as good as there is in the country. Kentucky is a close second. If they get it in that key area, they're going to duck you in and try to power that ball to the paint. I talked to Rick Barnes about that earlier this season. One of the reasons they love the post entries from the top of the key is because you can't double the post from up there. That's right. It eliminates help side. When, when you have the ball in the middle of the floor, there is no help side. Hero squares his hips and drains it. Boy, he's really good at that. South Carolina did not do a good job of handling that ball screen. Good on ball screen by P.J. Washington. Tyler Hero, rhythm shot to his left. That's probably his favorite shot. Battle inside, Silva and Travis. Good post D by Reed. Travis beating him to a spot, not allowing Silva good post position. The speed and P.J. Washington couldn't finish. Kentucky gets it back again. I hate to sound like a broken record, but Kentucky is just killing South Carolina on their offensive glass. Good push initially. Pass is a little low. They continue to hustle, get a second, and then a third chance at the rim. There you see that was against the zone again because remember that was against an out of bounds situation. Every inline OB to this point, South Carolina has played 2 3 zone. We saw it in the magnificent telestration <laughs> earlier uh, of Baker getting a three on the same action, just screening the high man in the zone, trying to overload it. Your that sense time. of humor is better than your vision. No question. Six for Keldon Johnson. I don't think I'll be accused of being the czar of the Telestrator like Mike Fratello. No. Back in the day, you're in Atlanta, and you can appreciate that. What do you think of Big Boy's fur coat? You well, got I a couple the, of those, don't you? I did. I, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the climate was appropriate to, to break that out, but I like the swag. Fashion knows no rules. Reed Travis has gone to a jump hook lately. Kenny Payne's been working with him on it. Fashion is a suggestion. Style is a choice. And I think Big Boy went all in with the fur. Loose ball, lost it on the floor for it. Much like Hassani Grab has gone all in with the carrot top. Mm -hmm. You should see his backpack. It's huge. <laughs> Here's Silva. Been quiet tonight. Frank's trying to get him going. He's touched it almost every offensive possession here in the second half. Good drive by A.J. Lawson. Physical at the rim. He's not quite heavy enough. That's his third. Not quite heavy enough to play through that contact. And on the other end, great push, great advance. Keldon Johnson attacking that basket. That's Chris Silva's third. 
huge play in this game. Frank Martin discussed Chris Silva playing with multiple fouls. He said, I've had some guys before that I could really trust in the situation, but Chris Silva is just just doesn't have a great feel for having to play with fouls. Now, in the second half against Tennessee, at about this time, he took Silva out of the game. Tennessee went on a run. He was caught between a rock and a hard place. Well, he certainly, he hadn't had made a move at all right now. He understands, you know, we're sitting on a 14-point game in Rep Arena. This is probably, you know, your chance. You've got to stay within striking distance, or, or who cares how many fouls he has. Largest lead of the game for Kentucky. Specifically, he was talking about Michael Beasley, who had a Kansas State, and he said, that's a guy who had a great feel for the game. I had to have him on the floor to win, and when he got in foul trouble, we would just say, hey, Michael, quit fouling. And he would. I say no. Silva saves it. Trey Campbell was the guy they were getting offense from early. That's his first shot attempt in the second half. He'll earn two free throws. Ashton Hagens has been one of the best steel men in the country. When we return, we'll compare him to one of the best in Kentucky history. And what does hand size have to do with it? Well, Ashton Hagens is one of the best in the country at steal percentage. He steals the ball 5% of the possessions when he's on the floor. And a big roll, his big hands. Yeah, he's quick, but when he gets his mitts on it, he can take it away. And it reminded us of what a former cat was able to do. Rajon Rondo was third in the country at steal percentage. In 2005, 6% of the possessions he would take it away. Turned it into easy buckets for Tubby Smith. And when you got a guy like that that can really motor an offense, Rondo set the steals record. But how about the hands? Rondo's hand size, 9.5 by 10, and Hagen's pretty big as well. Hagen's is 6'3". That's a handshake that will climb right up your forearm. Those, I'll tell you what, if Ashton Hagen's can do what Rajon Rondo has done, you're talking about an NBA All-Star guy that is still very productive in the NBA many, many years later. Uh, they think Hagen's has that type of potential. Should be a senior in high school right now. Still yep. a baby. Reclassified. So Rondo set the school record as a freshman. The freshman record. He's six ahead of the pace. I got a Ray John Rondo story for you. I'm all ears. Frank Martin, myself, on Bob Huggins' staff at the University of Cincinnati. We're playing Kentucky in Indianapolis. The RCA Dome in the NCAA tournament. Ray John Rondo was a starting point guard. Well, Frank Martin had the scout. Rondo had made three threes on the year going into that game. So the game plan that Frank convinced Hugs to implement was just lay off Rondo, make him make shots. Well, he made three in the first four minutes of the half. So you remember how Frank Martin was talking to Mike Kozar? That's how Bob Huggins was talking to Frank Martin. Here's Hero. Didn't get square that time. Tubby was telling me a story about Rondo one time. Rondo was complaining because his post players were fumbling passes as he would drive and feed it to the big guys. And Tubby said, you think you're a pretty good passer, huh? And he goes, yeah. He goes, well, obviously you're not good enough. Give it to him in a place where they won't drop it if you think you're so good. Here's Hassani Gravit, who's been awfully quiet tonight, yeah. hasn't Tom? And they need him to win big Desperately. games. Desperately. Every game they've won, if you look at them statistically, they have, they have they have made the plays that they needed to make to get out six and two because if you look at them statistically you'd say there might be two and six they more turnovers than assists they're getting out rebounded by their opponent they've got a number of guys that struggle in a number of areas but that kid has played consistently well and they've made the plays they needed to make how does his shooting when he's on how does it affect South Carolina maybe more so than than other teams in the half court well I think he's a guy you know in league play He's averaging over 13 points per game. Tonight he doesn't have a field goal. He's a senior. He's been through the battles. He needs to take some of the pressure off the young guy, A.J. Lawson. And he's been doing that. He was tremendous down the stretch on Saturday in Athens. He was tremendous down the stretch against Auburn in one of their key wins early at Florida. Uh, they are desperate for his production. A couple of post denials have led to steals on each of the last two possessions. And now Ashton Hagens will walk it up. Because if, if, if Hassani Gravitt's not making shots, then you're asking a tight end to pull up off yes. the dribble. And again, that that's probably not in the cards. That's what Evan Hinson does for Will Muschamp in the fall and all the way through their bowl game. 
Montgomery, pardon me, PJ Washington, excuse me, will be at the free throw line. Speaking of tight ends, tomorrow's National Signing Day. We'll have you covered right here on the SEC Network. SEC Now starts bright and early. Darius got an early crew call. He and my buddy Jordan Rogers will be on live at 9 a.m. Eastern. Live updates throughout the day, let you know where the nation's top recruits have landed. You can always watch in the ESPN app from anywhere. Frank just committed his fourth personal foul. P.J. Washington has been very aggressive in the high post and in the short corner. When he gets it, he has been looking to drive it. This is his sixth free throw of the night. So I hope his dad, Paul, recovering from knee surgery tonight, is doing well. And his mom, Sherry, watching, usually here in person. This is danger time if you're South Carolina. They've obviously still got Silva in the game. They're going to probably try to run offense through him. He steps out, takes a three. He's capable of that. But looking at my buddy Frank Martin, I don't think that was the one that he wanted. Now you've got to try to grind defensively or this thing can get away from you. Great extra pass. Grab it with the board. The push to Lawson. Silva wants the lob. And Lawson just took it himself. Kentucky will run the other way. P.J. Washington in the open floor. And Keldon Johnson flared out. Yeah, he stopped running. Yeah. He stopped running and he kind of maybe thought he was clearing some space and let P.J. get it to the rim. Wasn't a bad decision, but they weren't on the same page, obviously. Missouri and Tennessee still to come. That's over on ESPN2 at 9 o'clock. We're late in the clock. They're going to try to play through Silva. You see Tyler Hero there. Oh, he's got a little hand check, I think, on Reed Travis. I think that's what he's going to call. They got it on Hero, actually. Oh, how about that? We're on, the, on the double. They were going to double him off the catch. We had less than 10 on the clock. Unfortunate foul for Tyler Hero. Possession, South Carolina. They need to cash in here on this inline OB. Little flex action, trying to get Hassani grab it going. Felipe Hase with his first make. He's had a couple of decent looks. He's not great off the bounce. He's a very good catch and shoot face four. Finally cashed in. Grab it gets the assist. Duke is starting to pull away from Boston College now. It's a 10 point lead for Mike Krzyzewski's team. Screen from Washington. Quickly all the way down the paint and goes down awkwardly. Is he calling that on Silva? I can't tell. Yep, that's four. Evidently he, I couldn't tell if he wasn't set based on our angle, but he may have been in the restricted arc. And Emmanuel quickly has to be helped to his feet. Ball screen, drive. Yeah, you see his his heel, Silva's right heel was in the restricted arc. Good call by the official. And then hopefully, oh, he landed on that lower back. Looks like his arm's a little, got a little stinger. Young kid, pretty, pretty flexible, a little different than us. He can bounce back a little bit easier than you. Played for Cal on the uh, USA World Cup team in Egypt, under 19 team. I like potatoes in Egypt. Oh, sure. He's a good shooter. 73% in league play from the free throw line. Kentucky as a team, just under 77%. 37% as a team from three, but they just don't take much volume. They make the fewest of anybody in the SEC, yeah, just over six a game. However, at 37%, that is an outstanding percentage. That's third in the league. They take the fewest by a wide margin. Fourteen point lead for Kentucky. Who doesn't like potatoes? Even over in Virgie, Kentucky, they love potatoes. I think they do. Pinballs right to quickly. To Hagens. And the two point guards combined for a breakaway bucket. Great defense. Just having ball pressure leads to what you would say is an unforced turnover. But Kentucky forced it by their ball pressure. Two dynamic freshmen who are really good defensively. They're going to get Hagens for the foul. Little ball pressure on the senior leads to an errant pass. Quickly picks it up. 
quickly gets down the court, finds Aston Hagens for the finish. Kentucky has held South Carolina to 35 points thus far. Continuing the trend that you talked about with the Wildcats being an elite defensive team, Gravitt stepped on the sideline. We saw Kentucky working on just that. Their rotations out of that post dig. Putting it into play. Attention to detail by the young Kentucky Wildcats. Amarillo by morning. No, you don't have very many friends. Talmadge, your buddies should have told you that there's another E in Tennessee. Instead, they let you get on national television. Can I buy a vowel? <laughs> Let's take a look at tonight's Good Hands play brought to you by Allstate. Kentucky defensively elite quickly in Higgins. Two freshmen that have gotten better and better. Ball pressure leading to an errant pass, leading to two points for Big Blue. If you showed up with that sign, I, I may not tell you that it's spelled wrong, but the one thing they did is they made sure that he held it in front of his face the whole time. That's good. Proper placement. He can be anonymous. Proper placement for sure. If uh, that were you and I, I wouldn't tell you that it was spelled wrong until we were already halfway to hazard and almost home. Here's Washington. I know a good defensive philosophy is not falling down, which is what Mike Kotsar just did, leaving, leading to a wide open shot. P.J. Washington has given them fits off the bounce, as he does most people. He is, that's his exceptional gift. He can really make things happen off the dribble for himself or his teammates. Great finish on that end. Sitting at a 16-point game. He had a good drive. Coach Sar takes a little contact, falls down, and as you see, PJ Washington all by himself. So that's not how it's taught? I'm not sure that's how you do it. Not in Frank Martin's program, at least. Even the guy that had problems with the vowels knows that you have to stand up to try to guard PJ Washington. Vanna White still working? You know, is she? I think so. Still on the air. Or Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak. What an oldie but goodie he is. Been many days at the heart table. You guys sat around and tried to guess. Oh, yeah. Phonically. <laughs> I bet <laughs> I mean, they were always leaning on you, <laughs> Mr. Phonics over here. Look, Don Phonics worked for me. I spin the wheel and hit bankrupt. I know what's bankrupt to South Carolina offensively in the second half. They've got to find a way to manufacture some baskets. Their leading scorer has got four fouls, and their freshman just dribbled it off his knee. Again, it can unravel on you quickly. They just got to try to. That's what this is where Trey Campbell and Sonny Gravitt, Coach Zar, Hase, guys have got some experience. We've got to settle down, try to manufacture some points. 16th turnover of the night for South Carolina. You see Frank Martin, and, and we're guilty of this. We show it a lot when he gets animated. Mad, animated. Animated, yeah. But he's a teacher by trade. And what he really enjoys about the game of basketball is simply teaching. Of course, of course. And, and you know, you get frustrated when your team is not playing as well as you know they're capable. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know sometimes you realize what you're up against Nick Richards what a what a great look he's given them really good minutes I know he, he came in early in the game and picked up a couple of fouls but he blocked some shots and they can get any offense out of him great low post big time hook over the top well John Calipari told him he's like basically we don't need offense from him. we need defense, defense and focus that's right and focus is a big thing it allows you to play defense that's right block shots He's the best on their team at blocks per minute, obviously. Rebound the ball, stay in the game, don't foul unnecessarily. Richards. Kentucky is so good. They're not they're just not giving them anything free. There's no there's nothing free, and as a result, the ball has a hard time changing sides of the floor. So then you got guys out of the element, you got three on the clock, and they're lucky to get it off. Jamal Baker. Gotta pick it up. 
and quickly will reset. But talking about guys doing other things besides scoring, he referenced what the scouts said about P.J. Washington against Kansas. He said you went 0 for 4 from 3, and everybody agreed you played a great game. Here's P.J. Great Looking ball movement. Great ball movement. They just could not cash in. Again, 37% in SEC games. They've been making shots. Haven't been quite as proficient behind the arc tonight. Cal's point, by the way, about P.J. not making a three against Kansas wasn't to bring up that he's not a great outside shooter because he is, but his point was the guys at the next level love the way you play in that game even though you didn't make a perimeter shot. That's what they love about your game. Great point. And Washington and we have seen this all night. We've seen it all night. That's the 15th offensive rebound by Big Blue. Kentucky or South Carolina has struggled with defensive rebounding percentage all year. It's just they're just built differently, most especially with Silva out. And Kentucky has been attacking that offensive glass. I've got a suggestion for you. We're going to take you into another generation. So instead of saying you're afraid to sound like a broken record when Kentucky gets an offensive rebound, how about like a skipping podcast? Would that be better? That would probably would be a little I'm not better sure the to our young know. listeners. Yeah. But but I know there's a lot of KG old veterans for Big Blue watching this game. Yeah, them old heads know all about they it. They know about the broken records. And DJ Warren Peace doesn't even have a real turntable over there. It's all digital. Here's quickly. <laughs> Came with one on the clock. South Carolina with a run out. Bryant. You've got to try to score there because they have really struggled against the half court D of the Wildcats. Open floor opportunities are something that South Carolina needs to generate more of. This kid's really struggled at the free throw line. Yeah. 56%. Really struggled, but in league play, do you see what he's shooting? He's now three for 18 from the free throw line. Three for 18, and no, the man who misspelled Tennessee is not telling me that. I see that on the stat sheet. <laughs> uh, he has struggled. Something must be significant here. Free something if he misses this. Crowd got animated. Three potatoes, maybe. Evan Hinson returns. We've had Cal Mike tonight. I don't know if there's a better coach in all of college basketball to have Mike because good or bad, you're going to get energy from John Calipari. And he's been really positive, hasn't he? He has, yeah. Has been the, the, the kinder, gentler John Calipari because his team is playing so well. Again, great execution. They just have not been able to knock down open threes. Thing is, with some of these coaches, you don't really need to mic them to hear them. Yeah, right. Hear America them does. Clear. America does. We're here for America. And Estonia, and Gabon, and Chile, and Virgie. Campbell was hot early hasn't scored in the second half. I think it's safe to say Springfield will not be calling wanting a copy <laughs> of this tape at the end. So our producer Ben Hogue you can go ahead and burn that file. I don't think that's going to have to go to the hall. Former A&M sharpshooter DJ Hogue's cousin. <laughs> With two G's nonetheless. Yeah. Oh. Washington for three. That's his second one. Again he is showing you the whole package. Pick, pop, shoot it in, drive it by you. Dad might still be a little groggy, but got to have a smile on his face for the basketball. We've got the best of John Calipari, the soundtrack to take it a break. Rebound that ball with two hands. Bring it in and go. Have a ball, guys. Just energy, man. Energy. Look. Boop, 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 boop. You let him catch it and push them. That guy does that. You have the ability to go steal anytime you want. PJ, stay there. Down. Down. Not enough aggressiveness. Not enough. Come on. Playing for Bruce Pearl, Tennessee. Like, like his name was Brock Steele or something. You could put him in a post. You could have him run. Point. It was not because of his wingspan, though. No, it I was not. Uh, number one, Tennessee, home against Missouri. 
Volunteers on a 16-game win streak that's the longest in school history. They are so good. I think Jordan Bone, people focus on Williams and Schofield and their sensation. I think Jordan Bone's been the key for them this year. He's been tremendous, and I'm going to tell you who's coming. The last two or three weeks, Lamonte Turner, who was voted sixth man of the year yep. last year in the SEC, has really started rounding back into form for missing all that time early with a shoulder. Well, I don't know. Do you have the game here next Saturday, or did you get vitaled? Because <laughs> that is going to be because that is going to be one heck of a game. I believe Shulman and Billis will be here. Ah, and at this point in this game, he's the second best ball analyst around. <laughs> <laughs> they are follically challenged that crew, but they're. Jay is quickly becoming one of Big Blue Nation's favorite. Oh, no question. You will. Hey, they will roll out the red carpet, will they not? Mm-hmm. Keldon Johnson, a hard shot. Yeah. Guess what? You know what? That kid has given him really good minutes. E.J. Montgomery only playing about 11 minutes a game. Tonight he has played 13 minutes, and that is his ninth rebound. You talk about activity. Yeah. Bang for your buck. It's like the Tom Hart <laughs> off the bench. <laughs> You a lot of bang for your buck. Here's Hero. Oh. I like the shot, though. I like the pull up. I like the base. I like the mechanics. Kentucky's just been a little bit off. And if you're a Gamecocks fan, thankfully they have, or this could be uglier. The third personal on Reed Travis. Got a degree in science, technology, and society at Stanford. He's smarter than you and I combined. That's all you, that's all you could do to read that. Yes. <laughs> Silva back to the free throw line. Chris Silva, Hassani Gravitt, the two leading scorers for South Carolina coming into this game in league player combined one for eight from the field. And they have a combined four points. That is a recipe for a 24-point whipping which is what they're experiencing Montgomery fading away Travis offensive no. rebound another offensive rebound and that's a strong hand for EJ Montgomery I love his activity level good for this kid because if he if they could get quality production from him it's another option for Cal off that bench the kid is really athletic and we've seen it today over 10 rebounds in less than 15 minutes on the floor First, he tries it with his right hand, not quite as successful. Travis misses the bunny, keeps it alive. He gets to the left hand. Looks a little easier for him that way. Yeah. Five-star recruit. Georgia kid. Yep. Originally Wheeler High School, then Mount Bird in Florida. Mount Bird, Mount Verde. Everybody says it differently. Mount Bird. Montgomery again. Cowell and his staff. Kenny Payne, Tony Barbie, Joel Justice, John Robick. Great staff. They've got to be pleased with that because I know they're putting in the time and to see this kid do it in an SEC game, get him a couple of buckets. Great off the glass. It will do nothing but help that kid's confidence moving forward. And think about this, AK. Think about the length. If Kentucky can get guys off the bench to contribute, Nick Richards and EJ Montgomery bring incredible size off the bench and they bring a completely different pitch you know it's like a, a, a pitcher you know baseball better than I great back cut you know baseball better than I but if you've got two pitches and you're really good with the two that's one thing but if you can get a third pitch then you're almost unhittable you got Reed Travis power 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 you got PJ Washington versatility length can do a number of different things and then if you get Richards and EJ Montgomery Blocking shots, rebounding the ball, scoring efficiently at the basket. Again, it, it continues to help Kentucky grow into who Cal wants them to be. Here's Keldon Johnson. Consensus five-star recruit, number seven overall. Talking with a guy really high up in one of the NBA organizations over the weekend. He said he loves Keldon Johnson. He's got a, a bright future, and I think sometimes Local fans have a hard time seeing that when a specific player goes into a slump that they're not being effective or efficient. Yeah, you know, the kid has got, just like you said, tremendous upside. I think he could be a lockdown defender in time. And he just has the ability to make timely shots and to really get by you off the bounce. Henson, the tight end. Nope. And it will stay this way. 
Kentucky in control. When we return, Andy Kennedy is going to tell you his favorite knock knock joke. Knock knock jokes for now. Let's take a look at tonight's best performer brought to you by AT&T. It's been this young man, PJ Washington, Mr. Versatility. And he must be a fan of the Fujis because he's been killing them softly all night. 20 points, five rebounds, a couple of steals. Lauren Hill never had 20 points. Got the Derek Chivas look. He yeah. was a Missourian. Flashback. Plays a little like Chiefs. Better perimeter game. Yeah. Remember, remember the Band-Aid man could take you off the bounce. Great touch. By the way, rumors are that when Kentucky goes to Missouri in a couple of weeks, they're going to put Derek Chivas as number three in the Raptors at Mizzou Arena. Rumor has it, huh? Yeah. Heard it here first. 2,500-point score at Mizzou. Who wore it better, him or Nelly, the Band-Aid? Oh, well, where do you think Nelly got it? Of course, Derek Chivas, of course. In the MI crooked letter, crooked letter. Grab it. Still scoreless. It's hard to win when your senior guard goes for a donut. Again, taking nothing away. Kentucky is as good. We, we talked about it in the open, and I like it when we're right occasionally. Kentucky just strangles you defensively in the half court, and they have done that all night to South Carolina. We Travis steps through. He's sitting on nine. To me, you know what made that play? Great spacing. Nowhere to double read. Travis gave him room to operate at point blank range. He's going to cash that in. That one went off the window. I thought the same it thing. It went off the window from the corner. I thought the same thing, but watching this game, I've gone partially blind. <laughs> and so I, I wasn't sure that that did, but I think it skimmed off the, the, the side of the backboard. The next time, pass on the absinthe, but I see what you're saying. Here's Travis. He'll tee one up. Oh, wow. He's really confident with his three-point shot. I noticed it yesterday. Practice, There's that guy. Right? Yep. E.J. Montgomery. He's got eight. Obviously, P.J. has been the MVP of the game, but if, if, if I know John Calipari is going to be really pleased with the effort he's gotten out of E.J. Montgomery. If P.J. Washington keeps having games like this, his dad should have knee surgery every day. Oh. For guys had six, I'm not sure I would agree with that sentiment, but... Travis to Keldon Johnson. Another offensive set. rebound. This is ridiculous. They've gotten over 20 now in the game. If we were doing time of possession, seems the ball has stayed on this end of the floor this entire half. Hero. Left to a pull-up. Good back cut. Now we're late in the clock. Got to go make a play. Quickly hesitate. Great pass. Foul. Travis, and he got mauled. By Hase with two seconds left on the clock. Time now to take a look at our defensive spotlight brought to you by Shelter Insurance. Cats Kentucky's everywhere. Smothering. Cats are everywhere. You know, you really can't pick one guy out. It's really all of them. Starts really with their backcourt and with Ashton Hagens. I think he sets the tone. I think Tyler Hero is much improved defensively. Emmanuel quickly has always been good. He's starting to play angles better as he's garnering more experience. P.J. Washington can guard four positions on the floor, as can Keldon Johnson. They've got a number of guys who are versatile defensively, and as a, as a result, they are boa constrictor-like. Now, don't ask me to spell that. Or the B.O.A. Man who is... <laughs> Definitely challenged <laughs> in the signage department. This is, uh, yeah, he left already. That guy headed back to wherever his neighborhood might be. Mm. How about that Kentucky-Tennessee game? They'll meet twice in the regular season. I really think that whoever wins that series, right, you meet twice, you get right. a good chance. Gonna be, I don't be the regular chance, season champ. But you could also meet in the championship game of the SEC tournament. And if that's the case, and if you're still top five, both of them, then you'll have a number one seed hanging in the balance for the big game. This is a big game. You know, obviously Kentucky has been dominant tonight. Going to win this game very easily. Got a big challenge in their next game at Mississippi State. Mississippi State with a big win on the road Saturday against their in-state rival, Ole Miss. Reggie Perry was dominant. Quindary Weatherspoon played like an all-league guy that he is. 
and now Mississippi State. I'm actually flying tomorrow morning to be in Starkville. They play LSU at home tomorrow. They play Kentucky at home on Saturday, and they play Alabama at home the following week. So a big three-game homestand for the Mississippi State Bulldogs. E.J. Montgomery commits his fourth. Johnny David has entered the game for Kentucky. He was my guest on 47 feet. Wow. Uh, I don't so think you're trying to take a little credit for that. I could just tell by the pitch. I just want to say I don't think we're ever going to see another episode of 47 feet. That belongs to our friend Jay Billis. He was right. kind enough to lend it. To lend it for At the least game halfway. special that's how circumstance. He, that, that's how he lends things. Yeah, half, I mean, he, halfway. <laughs> he told me straight up. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Hart, you can't do full court, but you do half. We right. should be fine. Right. And, and promote me plenty. And now the young kid gets in. And I, wouldn't it be great? Everybody's going to want to do 47 feet if he hits a bucket. It would be epic if we could get a penetrating pitch for him to knock one down. We're not supposed to pull over here, but we're pulling no. for him. He's got the self-lacing shoes on now. I don't really know what that is, but. Vandy in Arkansas coming up next. You just think of it like uh, those fancy suede shoes you're wearing, except without laces. You just use yeah. your, your iPhone and use the app, and it tightens them up for you. Technology. Barry Michael J. Fox back to the future. Mm, first basket. Comes with less than a minute to go. See if Johnny David gets a touch. They got to get a shot off. It looks, like, shot it looks, like, it looks like it looks like maybe Johnny will get one. Cal's still coaching him. High ball screen. Roll. Oh, they're going to throw back. EJ was not caring about Johnny. EJ, <laughs> hey, hey, EJ, it's been his night. What a great second half by that young freshman. Got a double double. And then Henson lost a handle on it. Kentucky likely won't take a shot here. Frank no, Martin and John play. Calipari chatting at midcourt. <laughs> what, what, what is Frank Martin okay. doing? <laughs> him, him and Pat Driscoll sharing a lab. Can't That's, lose your, never lose your sense of humor, Tommy. Never lose your sense of humor. Do me a favor. You keep talking. I'm going to go talk to Cal. I'll do that. Impressive. Impressive outing for Big Blue. South Carolina tried to stay around early. Made shots. Got out to an early lead and then that suffocating Kentucky defense took over. And did not allow South Carolina anything free in the second half. Impressive performance by Kentucky prior to hitting the road to go to Mississippi State this weekend. In another challenging game. I see you, Tom. You look outstanding, but I can't hear you. I'm curious if you're still talking about Mississippi State schedule, because I know you're looking forward to them. Yeah, I, I am. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night's game, and I'm looking forward to Big Blue going in there on Saturday. Uh, Kentucky is playing outstanding, most especially defensively. All right, I'm with John Cal Perry. Uh, a lot to talk about with your team. 35 days ago, you guys were a top 50 defensive team. Now you're top 10. Where did that change? I think we're eighth. Give us the right. You know what, top 10? I was being general. You, you'll probably seven. be six tomorrow. Okay. Um, no, and, and I told them. But it starts with can you guard the ball? Can you guard a dribbler? If you can't guard a dribbler, and I mean everybody on the floor has got to be able to keep people in front. You can't be good defensively, and that's all we've worked on. And so they're scrambling, they're talking, they're engaged. Kelvin was better today. Ashton had some turnovers, but played better today. Let's start with E.J. Montgomery, a double-double energy and focus, what you preach. He is, he's, he's ready to break through. This was a great game for him because it was physical. It's the one thing that kind of holds him back at times. Now he knew I had to play physical, and all of a sudden he's getting every rebound, scoring around the basket. I'm telling you, he and Nick take us to another level. And you'll face a lot of physical teams down the stretch, and now you have P.J. Washington over the last five games playing like a lottery pick. And, and what we're trying to do, like I, I got on him, they got around and tipped two balls from him. No. No, that's the old P.J. You move those feet and work harder to get the ball than they're working to tip it away. But I'll tell you what, it was a good win for us. And South Carolina is a good team now. I mean, you know, they were they're playing well. We kind of hit them on a good day. Hey, lastly, you guys were having some fun after the game, you and Frank, before the clock had run out. Can you give us a peek into what you guys were chatting about along with Pat Driscoll? He just said, stop it. We're not playing again. <laughs> Quit complaining. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for your time, Cal.
All right, the Kentucky Wildcats with a significant win over South Carolina, 76 to 48. It's a final for Andy Kennedy. I'm Tom Hart saying so long from Rupp Arena. Let's take it to the studio.